There's a very old stereotype about Jews, that Jews are not loyal to the countries in which they live, but they're loyal to some global conspiracy, like a global capitalist conspiracy, or Jewish conspiracy, or a communist conspiracy. Trump economic advisor Gary Cohn's final cabinet meeting was today, not at all coincidentally, the same day President Trump announced tariffs of 25% on steel imports, 10% on aluminum. The very policies that prompted Cohn to resign this week. But in the Trumpiest way possible, the president tried to make it clear today there were no hard feelings. This is Gary Cohn's last meeting in the cabinet and of the cabinet, and he's been terrific. He may be a globalist, but I still like him. <laughs> he is seriously a globalist, there's no question. But you know what? In his own way, he's a nationalist because he loves our country. Okay, so globalists. Now, where have we heard that before? Well, the one thing, for one thing, in this statement Tuesday from Office of Management and Budget Director Mick Mulvaney, quote, as a right-wing conservative and founding member of the Freedom Caucus, I never expected that the co-worker I would work closest and best with at the White House would be a globalist. That word globalist keeps popping up. It sounds like a pretty mainstream term, a description of an economic and political ideology. But it is more than that. It's also become a dog whistle to right-wing conspiracy theorists. Mark uh, Pickavage of the Anti-Defamation League tells the New York Times, the far right uses globalism as shorthand for worldview based on racism, xenophobia, and anti-Semitism. He points out that after the Cold War, the far right developed an obsession with prominent Jews like philanthropist George Soros. The president's old frenemy, Steve Bannon, frequently targeted globalism at Breitbart News with headlines like Paul Singer and George Soros' billionaire bookends of globalist opposition to Trump agenda. But there's more from conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, whose outrageous claims include calling the Sandy Hook massacre a hoax and 9-11 an inside job. Quote, the globalist plan to divide America is intensifying. Quote, Bernie Sanders is another globalist scammer who let Hillary rob the nomination. But the victim class loves to get robbed. Go to Venezuela. And this quote, globalist elites are now evacuating Western countries to reclusive islands, bunkers, and terrorists to escape the rising tide of nationalist pride sweeping the world. So what does it mean when the President of the United States freely uses a term like globalist, a term that's also used in the darkest corners of the far right? Here to discuss, CNN political commentator Peter Beinert, uh, contributing editor of The Atlantic and senior columnist for The Forward. Also CNN political commentator Jack Kingston, a former congressman and senior advisor to the Trump campaign. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, Good evening. What does it mean to you to call someone a globalist? Jack? Um, I, it, none of the sinister things that the article has described, I think somebody who's a globalist is somebody who's um, free trade at any cost and maybe um, favors more uh, giving up sovereignty in exchange for um, oversight laws. I, I can tell you this, that um, when we voted on NAFTA, our GATT, our most favored nation status for China, there was always this suspicion that we were going to give up our rights to um, globally elected international boards who would decide how we can, um, what our labor standards, our environmental standards would be. And um, so generally speaking, a globalist would be somebody who would kind of side on the international body side of governing as opposed to um, one government in, in your own country. I, 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 and, and, and let me say this, Don, it's a very loose term. I don't think there's any specific, um, you know, two people probably would have a different uh, connotation of it. So, Peter, let's talk about that. For many people, the term globalist has an anti-Semitic undertone to it. I went through some of the history right there, also in the popular with the alt-right, with uh, Breitbart and the Bannon wing. Um, how has it made its way to the White House? The problem is that there's a very old stereotype about Jews, that Jews are not loyal to the countries in which they live, but they're loyal to some global conspiracy, like a global capitalist conspiracy, or Jewish conspiracy, or a communist conspiracy. And that's why you disproportionately find that the people who are called globalists, like George Soros, are Jews. It's a little bit like the term thug, right? The term thug just always seems often to be applied to African Americans. Now, that's not to say that every person who uses the term globalist is anti-Semitic. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But the question is, are we going to give Donald Trump the benefit of the 
doubt, right? This is a guy who said, I want, only want guys with yarmulkes counting my money. A guy who said to the Republican Jewish coalition, you won't support me because I don't want your money, but you're great deal makers. A guy who in his final ad, closing out of the campaign, ran this ad showing three Jews, only Hillary Clinton and three Jews, Soros, Blank Fine, the head of Goldman Sachs, and Janet Yellen, the head of Federal Reserve, and talked about the global power structure and the global elite, which is destroying the American economy. I don't think he gets the benefit of the doubt anymore. We've got too many incidents. Mm -hmm. Jack, I mean, there are some on the far right who promote this idea that Jews control banking, that Jews control the media and the economy. Do you see how some people do use the word globalism as code for these anti-Semitic stereotypes? Well, I, I don't agree with that, but let, let me say this. For example, if you look back at this kind of one world government suspicion, things like the Club of Rome that was founded by David Rockefeller that had people in it for like the King of Spain, the Queen of Spain, um, Henry Kissinger, um, uh, you know, they, they have people from the right, they have people from the left in them, and there's this great suspicion that these people are going to run our nation. Um, I would point out Michelle Bachman even introduced a resolution once that said the President of the United States could not enter into a treaty that would uh, allow us to um, forgo the dollar in exchange for some international legal but Jack, tender. this is Looney so that, Tunes. This is well, like, I, I'm this not is saying craziness, it's not, uh, right? Well, you know this what, doesn't but, actually really Peter, exist as a threat to the United States. Peter, you know what? I'm just saying that it's out there. I, I mean, it's a, a black helicopter there, theater. And the it's president a black of the United States shouldn't be participating in it. No, I mean, no, well, that's, no, that's because, my question then. Usual, By continuing no. to use this word, is the president mainstreaming a far right term? Do you uh, think? Well, yeah, Gary uh, Cohn. No, Gary. I, 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 think you, I, I think we can get too excited and too anti Trump on this <clears> thing. <throat> you know, if you look at those steel workers, those aluminum workers who were in the White House today at that announcement, those are the people who want to have America look out for America. That's why America First is so important to the voters back home because they get it. They're what does that have to do with? With the term globalism. Be, because the idea, and, and let me say, you know, or again, globalist. having been in Congress and voted on a lot of trade agreements and other kind of UN related foreign operation type issues, that people feel like we get beat at the bargaining table and that we need to look out for America more. What does that more. have to do with the term globalist? But, well, a globalist would put America's interests second. Whereas a nationalist that? is going to think... You, is you really suggesting... Gary Cohn disagreed with Trump's position on tariffs. We could have that debate. Are you Peter, really uh, suggesting listen, that Gary Cohn I, doesn't put America's interests first? He just thinks that the Peter, tariff Peter, is bad okay, for the United listen, States. I, I, <laughs> Peter, I can't, I can't feign the excitement over this that you seem to, to be able to do. Well, well maybe that's because <laughs> we have a different life experience. So well, uh, I get well, a little more excited about this because I actually happen to be from a people that has actually been on the downside of these kind of anti-Semitic conspiracies. Well, theories. you know and what? I don't like uh, you're, you're absolutely wrong. You're a, I, know on, I know what you're saying. You're, you're absolutely wrong on that. Um, uh, you know, I know that it, it's kind of catchy to say, oh, we're being labeled, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> David Rockefeller and the Club of Rome, the Trilateralists, the uh, Council on Foreign You're Relations, more all these international here. boards, these are the international boards that when people think about globalism, they think about these groups are putting but Jack, uh, just America's because someone is second. ignorant of the term, it doesn't make it right just because you... I, Think that you should, I, maybe you should explain to people who think it's okay to say that, but that is not a term that you use. There are other terms that you well, can use for that. I, 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 I don't. I, I, I think that that you, you're putting on a little more into this term than there really is. And, and I say that I'm just asking. The, the, I'm just asking um, as someone who's been you know, call the N-word. Some people like to use it. I don't like the term. And if I'm offended by it, then you should be cognizant of the fact that I'm offended by it, whether whatever way you use it. Don't use that word around me. And well, it's well to some let people. me say this. Ha having been raised in an integrated society and having gone to schools where I had people of all religion, my daughter's godfather, for example, Peter, is Jewish. He's been my best friend. I was at his bar mitzvah, he was in my wedding. I've spoken in his synagogue. Do you use the term never globalist call, around never, him? I, I, I would, and, and, and I can tell you, Jonathan Matthew Harvey in Columbia, South Carolina, won it bad an eye because neither he nor I have ever put that term in context of being anti Semitic. And let me say this. You know what? I'm listening to you, Peter, and I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I think that, uh, you know, I see okay. your point of view, but, but, but I think I've you also go. should be able to say, say that, um, Jack, understand it's that it's a of different... Trump's history. If it were somebody else, I would well, not you know, say it, uh, it's his okay. history. Jack, let's, let's give Peter the, the last word here, but it, you've spoken a lot. Let's give him the last word. I am not someone 
who thinks that you should throw around the term anti-Semitism lightly. I think lots of people could use the term globalist, but the, quest, the problem is why does Trump keep doing this? Why does he keep referring to Jews in the context of people who are only concerned about money Maybe. and are part of shadowy power structures? Okay, it's I gotta Trump go, guys. using this term that works. We come back. A Too former much Russian spy <laughs> poisoned by a nerve agent on British soil. We'll talk about that. Wake up early, slap on some...